tipping smoke with the passions ignite. Sit back, relax, take a puff, catch flight. Big Smoke Podcast, this your source for the best. Puff a little more, here to help you worry less. Yeah, keep that pressure in my chest. Big bag, no stress. And I'm sipping on text. 25 lighters on my dress. Set the niggas, wangers in the leather. Got my protection. What up, world? Another episode of the Big Smoke Podcast. I'm your host, Maine, with my co-host, Diddy. We're back at it. Back at it. We got a special guest in the building. OG, triple OG. More than triple OG. <laughs> <laughs> but one of our sponsors, man, he sponsors us, sponsors us here at the Navarre Cigar Lounge here in Navarre, Florida. None other than Mr. Ron Ward. Hey, 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 hey. How you doing? Uh, living, living, OG. How you doing, man? Doing great, man. Doing great. Another opportunity to get to smoke cigars with some people uh, that I like. So <laughs> <laughs> that's important, man. You got to smoke in good company. Absolutely, and uh, we definitely appreciate all the hospitality that you've uh, given to us. And uh, I mean, the cigars and the whiskey. So yeah, we definitely appreciate the sponsorship. But uh, definitely wanted to get you on here, get you an opportunity to kind of say what Navarre Cigars is all about. So definitely. Before we get into that, man, I got to have a little backstory, Diddy. So. Drive, I think you put me on driving down 98. I had just moved to Florida and he was like, yo, this is a, it's a nice little cigar lounge right. going towards uh, Pensacola Gulf Breeze. You should check it out. And I was like, all right, walk in, walk in. I see OG Ron sitting where he's sitting at right now, y'all. <laughs> That's <laughs> uh, his chair. Come in and I just saw like minded individuals, but they was all on the same mission, just laid back, cool, right. on the same path. And what I kind of needed at that point in my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I just moved from overseas and I was kind of lost. Didn't have any any OGs right, in my right, corner. Right, right. This was a great place to kind of establish that. So, Ron, we appreciate you, man, having a space for us. Yeah. Well, you're welcome, first of all. And, and uh, that's kind of why the lounge came about, because there was a lounge needed in this area. And I think we tried to bring an experience and a culture, a cigar culture to this area. Mm-hmm. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we've hit it out of the park, so. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I know the first time I came in here and kind of just piggybacking off what he said, and that's kind of why I recommended it. I was like, man, it's a cool shop, like super laid back, chill, very personable. And I feel like, you know, you could have a cigar lounge that's top tier, but if your customer service and that one-on-one is not there, I'm coming to Navarre Cigars all day just for that fellowship. So, yeah, we uh, definitely appreciate that. Yeah. So, Ron, how did you end up even in the cigar business, man? Because – I don't want to get too deep in your life story because we're going to be here for a minute. This, yeah. <laughs> man, this man has done anything you probably thought you did. He's done it, right? Yeah. This is the OG for real. But how did you get into the cigar space? Well, first, I want to light up a smoke. Oh, okay. Yeah. You guys, that. how yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we going to be big smoke podcast without lighting up the smoke, man? So I want to light up the cigar. The cigar tonight is Camino Cigars. One of my uh, close friends, he owns a factory in Timberville, Dominican Republic. Nice. nice. And they came out with a phenomenal cigar. This is their fifth anniversary cigar, and it's got a uh, San Andreas wrapper on it, Nicaraguan uh, binder and fillers, and Dominican wrapper on that. Nice. I mean, okay. Binder on cool, cool, also. Cool. So this is a uh, smoke that I smoke on a daily basis, and uh, this uh, this Vitola is actually a Toro. Okay. And um, I think you guys will like it, and uh, we paired some Timber Creek uh uh, whiskey with it. Nice. It's a local distillery that's based out of Crestview, Florida. And uh, I think you guys would like the pairing. Man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Let's light it up. Light it up. Big smoke. Oh, you got yours right there. So let me tell y'all something real quick. Hey, Ron, be hooking us up for real, for real. <laughs> well, you asked the question that, how did I get started? Yes, sir. So back when I was 12 years old, uh, my godfather in Alabama used to smoke cigars. So uh, I used to go and sneak his cigars out of his uh, drawer. At 12, right? At 12, <laughs> man. Early so, in the game. So I've been smoking cigars since I was 12. So once I uh, did the first light up, the experience was everlasting, and I've been smoking cigars ever since. And, uh, yeah, I love the experience. I love the, the culture of the business, and uh, I love the, what it brings, it brings people together. So Definitely. it is a great, great experience. So, But I kind of got started in the business just by chance. I was smoking in a cigar lounge in Lansing, Michigan, and 
I befriended the owner of the shop and we became friends. And one night we were walking out of the shop and he asked me to be a part of his organization. And three years after that, you know, we were still in business together. So, so that's kind of how I got started. Nice, man. Nice. And cigar business is what I'm learning and what I'm seeing and, and what you've uh, graciously just taught me is it can be a difficult business to maintain. So the longevity aspects of so far, what have you learned or what's a big lesson that you would tell up and coming cigar owners? I think that consistency is key. That's rule one. The next thing is think outside the box. Mm. Absolutely. Don't try to be what everybody else is in this industry. Like a cookie cutter. Absolutely. Gotcha. So think outside the box because there's so much opportunity in this business other than people walking through the door. Mm. So if you can't get the money walking through the door or the business coming through the door, then go out and get it. It's it's like any other business, but but definitely go out and get it. So, My question to you is like, uh, what is your favorite cigar? And what is your favorite whiskey or bourbon cognac to have with it? What would you say is your go-to smoke? Outside of this one, I know you say you smoke it on a daily basis. But if I went into Ron's vault, what would be something that you pulled out and said, hey, try this, this is my go-to? Well, the cigar that I'm smoking at the time. Yeah. <laughs> but, but if I had to go with one, it would be probably uh, my uh, Navarre exclusive, the Maduro. Okay. We created that cigar with a lot of passion, but a lot of knowledge of the tobaccos that we were marrying together. And we tried to do that cigar based off of us enjoying it ourselves. Right. And then other people started enjoying it. So it, it was great. And it took off for us. It's a full Nicaraguan cigar. Uh, all the tobaccos are Nicaraguan. It's a Maduro wrapper. But it is a simply great cigar. We only sell it in one Vitola. Only make it in one Vitola, and that's a Toro. Okay. And I kind of smoke that cigar on a weekly basis also. Gotcha. My second would be our Navarre exclusive uh, Sun Grown, which is a uh, full Nicaraguan also with a Sun Grown wrapper. And my third and fourths are also going to be my, <laughs> <laughs> which, yeah, yeah. Is, which is the Connecticut and the um, and the Double Maduro. Double Maduro is the only Vitola, only cigar with a different Vitola, which is a Cuban the Robusto size. So. Got you. And well, it comes something you know, kind of something I heard that you said was something that you would want to smoke yourself, and I feel like that's a major key right there is because you're making a product that is something that you would want to smoke yourself. So you're kind of, what's what am I looking for? Like you're catering to something that not only for you, that you feel is great to yourself and you like it and enjoy it, but something that you also would feel like somebody else would. And I think that's probably a good avenue to take is because you're like, you know what? I'm a cigar guy. This is something that I would like. So I'm more than certain that you're, you know, beginner smoker, expert level smoker will enjoy it as well. So taking the time and effort to put in the making of something that is uh, quality to you. And, you know, so that's pretty dope. So that's something that I'll, we'll kind of, you know, put in our back pocket and remember something like that. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that cigars are a lot like food and wines. You start off with a passion for it. You try to get the right blends for it. Sometimes it works for every, a lot of people. Sometimes it doesn't. But when you do hit that home run, man, it's, right. it's invigorating. And, and I think that when it comes to cigars, I've had a long history of hitting wins with the right blends. And the Navarre Exclusive is one of those cigars that's for everybody. Yeah. Right. Uh, we sold about 59,000 of them last year, wow. which is high. I mean, for a small place like this, I mean, it's, it's high. But one of the great things that we like to communicate with our cigars is each one of our bands represents a branch of the military. Wow. So we have the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. I think that giving back in that way to them is a great thing because we do cigars for warriors. And um, we give great cigars. Great program, by the way. Yeah, yeah. great program. Send cigars over to the warriors. So we give back that way, and I think that the community uh, has come aboard and, and supported us. Nice. Definitely. Not to pass over, you know, because you dropped some gems just now, but the Navarre exclusive, what made you decide to get into your own brand? I know branding is key in this business, and you own the Navarre Cigar Shop, but to, to develop and pick the right blend, 
what made you decide to go further and make your own custom cigars? Well, actually, the cigars were being made for myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny story. So we were having our grand opening of Navarre Cigars, and I wanted to do something special for our VIP members. So we started handing them out to uh, the VIP members, and everybody kept coming back asking where did we get these cigars from, and they wanted more. So just from a business standpoint, I was like, oh, okay, let's just try Absolutely. to um, see what it's take us. And um, the more we put in there, the more they bought. Yeah. So we started putting it in as a regular production, and it's been a regular production to the point where we're having a hard time keeping up with it. Oh, right, <laughs> and man, it's, yeah. I mean, we're all out all the time because we make them in small batches. We only have one roller, and she does a great job, and uh, we ship a lot of uh, cigars also. So that keeps us low a lot of times. Right, no, so, makes sense. And we don't want to expand to the point where we are overextended. So we just do what we can, make as many good cigars as we can, quality cigars. We don't want to do volume, volume, volume. We just want to do quality. Quality, cigars. right. No, that makes sense. Gotcha. Do you mind pouring me up? A, oh, yeah, I got you. I was going to pour up myself. Yeah, I got you, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, Ron, while we're smoking this cigar right here, just want to kind of jump back into this one, the Caminos by Caesar. What do you like so far about this cigar? So, Dominicans typically, when you use Dominican tobacco, you get a lot of flavor, but not a lot of strength. This cigar has a lot of body. It's reminiscent of a uh, Nicaraguan cigar. So, you have the best of both worlds. The San Andreas wrapper on it is just, just great. When this cigar was first created, they did it with the wrapper was a hybrid. So then they got into just having a simple San Andreas wrapper, and it just turned out great. And um, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Nice, nice. About yourself, Diddy? I like it a lot. It's uh, it's pretty smooth. I can taste the, uh, I can't ever say that country's name. I say it wrong every time. Try it out. No, I'm not doing it. Not on, not on, a, but because uh, <laughs> I'm not going to embarrass myself. I can taste like that. It's even throughout, like it's uh, it's very well balanced. Yeah. That's uh, I'm enjoying it, and man, I just had the first little sip of the whiskey. Very man, yeah. smooth, no bite. Yeah, and and not to kind of jump onto the whiskey tangent, but whenever I come into the shop, Ron has a new bottle in here to pair with his cigars, and I've never been disappointed. <laughs> well, th thank you. I, I am a whiskey guy. I have uh, many bottles of it. I enjoy it with my cigars. I probably drink a couple glasses too much every day. <laughs> and I probably smoke too many cigars. I, I probably smoke six, six cigars a day, but it's my therapy. Right. And it helps me get through the day. So no, that makes sense. Definitely. Where do you see uh, cigars in the, in the future? Like, wh how do you feel like the industry is doing the, the demand for cigars? Because I, I know on social media, I follow, you know, celebrities and stuff, but I see them smoking a lot more cigars nowadays. I think this was becoming a thing. So would you say the industry is actually evolving and is the demand going up as well? Absolutely. Uh, we had the highest demand of cigars during COVID. Wow. Because like I said, it's therapy. And during COVID, everybody needed a little therapy. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be um, up to the next generation to take it to the next level. I think we're doing our job to try to do as much as we can to get it to the masses. Yeah. And more people are coming into the cigar industry uh, more than ever. I see a lot of females coming into the industry, and um, which is great. I yeah. um, yeah. want to definitely include them within the cigar culture. You see some of the cities like San Antonio, uh, Houston, Atlanta, those places have a big cigar culture with, with females. Mm -hmm. So that's going to grow the business in itself. And then the younger crowd is actually coming in and starting to smoke. Right. You know, look at yourselves. I mean, you know, younger, younger guys sitting here smoking cigars. When I first started in the business, we probably have doubled in the size as far as the industry. Wow, yeah. So it's very, very rewarding to see that. So yeah. You touched on, uh, I, I don't want to steal your, your thunder, Diddy, but uh, you touched on the female smoker and just a female owner. I know you had brought in uh, some Don Kiki. I know she's a female owner. You definitely see that space growing. And how can we, I guess, I don't know if the right word is attract, but yeah, attract uh, more female smokers to this more male dominant space. I think we just have to make them feel comfortable with coming into these spaces. Um, one of the things that we did here at Navarre Cigars is 
we tried to decorate the place so it doesn't look like a man cave and right, it looks right. more inclusive for women. Also, when we opened, we did a um, focus group to try to determine what would be the best approach to bring females. And there were a couple of things. The core was one. Also, the ventilation system. Um, uh, yeah. So we try to hit that out of the park. We're actually um, going to upgrade our, our ventilation system within, within the next month. But f- females don't want to come in and, and get a lot of smoke in their hair. Yeah. You're going to get some, but you don't want to walk out of right. here and have to just take all of, off your clothes in the garage. They don't <laughs> right. want to do that. We can do that, but they don't want to right. do that. Yeah. So I think those are things that we can do to attract females because at the end of the day, we want as many people smoking cigars as possible so we can create even more and great cigars um, in the future. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, I know. So for me, and kind of going back to what you were uh, had alluded to is, for me, I, I kind of got into the cigar game with my dad and my uncle. Uh, so they were big cigar smokers. And uh, when I joined the military, actually, I think when I started first smoking was uh, I had got back from a deployment and uh, my uncle had, you know, a couple for me or whatever. But uh, more so the fellowship and the having that connection and kind of bringing us closer together, right? Because it takes a little bit of time to smoke a cigar, you know, to Absolutely. get through it or whatever. And so that was time where me and my dad and my uncle, we sat there and talked about any and everything over a nice cigar, you know, a glass of whiskey or whatever. So I think to the masses out there, like, use cigar smoking not only as the art of the, the cigars making, but, man, there's business meetings, golf courses. I mean, you can take a cigar anywhere and kind of talk about, hey, man, what do you think about this cigar? And then just talk about life. So I get what you meant when you said it's almost like an outlet. It's uh, I get that aspect of it because this is something that me and my dad and my uncle used to do. I've kind of introduced Maine to it a little bit too. And now some of our buddies are actually trying to get into like the you know the, you know smoking a cigar. So absolutely, I think that it is definitely a uh, thing that you can do with your family, your friends, and, and it brings all walks of life together. Right. That's big. When you come into the cigar lounge, it's open. You can have open conversations. You can talk about business you can talk about nothing right uh, a lot of times we get in here and we just talk about nothing man and people tend to let their hair down a little bit more right when you have something in common yeah so i always call the cigar the icebreaker nice absolutely so nice. it starts the conversation and a lot of people might not want to have hard conversations outside this building but Inside this building, they'll, they'll talk about anything. Right. And I, I've heard it all, man. <laughs> yeah. I've heard it all. So, no. but yes, to go back to what you're saying, the, your family can enjoy a cigar with you. We have a lot of people that come in. Hey, I'm just picking up cigars for um, my dad. He's coming to town on a holiday or something. Mm-hmm. And um, most people want to enjoy something like that with their family. Right. I think that was key what you said. All walks of life. So you walk in here and everybody, like you said, puts their hair down and you might have a four star dinner on here. You might have a billionaire in here. You might have average Joe from down the street. But once you come into cigar lounge like this one and you have the TV on, the sports on, like you said, this is the icebreaker. Hey, man, what are you smoking? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, by the way, I'm Jason. And, you know, so you kind of let your hair down and you put away that, you know, I'm a CEO You and you put that. I'm here just to smoke a cigar and, you know, have simple conversation. And so this is a kind of place that you come uh, to fellowship. So that's a great point that you made. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think since the time that I've been here, I've met more guys that have more credentials. You always hear the story. You, you don't want to be the smartest person in the room or the, the, the biggest dog in the room. And I think this space here, especially at Navarre Cigars, has allowed me to meet people from all different walks of life that have more experiences and it's sometimes it might just be me and Ron or, or me and Dave in the back. Who, shout out to Dave holding down the, the video, man. <laughs> and I'm just picking their brains on life stuff because they've been through it. Or how do I handle this situation? So it's therapy. Right. It's mentorship. It's, yeah, it's, it's a, a lot. lot of stuff that yeah. goes into just coming in for a nice cigar. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. What would you say the one thing that you love about Navarre Cigars? Besides the fellowship? Yes. Man, that's a good question, Ron. I love this space, period. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that's an open, like that might not be as detailed as you want, an answer that you want. But this space, like I said before, has provided me with so much 
wisdom. I've only yeah. been here seven months, I'd say, mm -hmm. fully. And it's provided me more mentorship than I've had in other spaces that I've yes. had. Yeah, and, would, and that's crazy. Yeah, I think from the customer service, like you said, being comfortable in this place, and it's a positive energy. You know, you walk into a spot and you can just feel something different. I'm not just saying that because we're on the air and you're sitting in front of me, but like the first time I walked in here and I, I actually called him once I left, there's something about the energy in this place that goes outside of just a cigar, picking it, going in and picking up a cigar. That's what I would say I like about it. And you can't put a price tag on being comfortable. You know what I mean? Yep. So like, cool, if David Off had a lounge here, but their customer service is not there. Yes. You know, they're just trying to sell a cigar. Yep. And I feel like that's what makes this place different is uh, being able to be comfortable. And like you said, let, you, let your hair down. And there's no pressure, too. You know, you right. go into some cigars, uh, lounges or cigar shops, and it's like, oh, what do you want to buy? Or I'm going to steer you to this. But no, it's folks that's actually like taking care of what's your palate like? Or are you a beginner? Are you an intermediate smoker? Are you an expert smoker? No? Okay, let me guide you to this. And then... To be honest, man, you're in, not just saying this because I know you, but your in-house smokes, your Navarre yeah, cigar right. branded smokes are A1. I tell people all the time, hey, go pick up that Sun Grown, man. Mm -hmm. It's a good smoke. Like, go get that Connecticut if that's what you like, Navarre cigars. Right. So I think what you're doing here in this space for this community is A1. And speaking of community, you kind of branched out a little bit more with the library. So talk about that experience, man. Yeah, so the library uh, is our second location in the Panhandle, and it kind of came about because we were going to put the first library in uh, the French Quarter. Mm. That kind of fell through, so we decided to put it in Fort Walton Beach, 59 Bill Parkway, Southwest. <laughs> but, um, it's on Google Maps and everything. Yes. <laughs> so when we think about building out the cigar lounges, we try to build it out and make it look and reflect the community that we're building it in. And I think we did that with the library uh, cigar lounge. And um, it's a little different from the bar cigars, of course, a little bigger. The core is a lot different, exposed wood. It's one of those lounges that you can feel comfortable in also. But uh, so if you don't want a Navarre experience today, you can go over to the library and have the library experience and vice versa. I think that, each community should have their own signature lounge, and I think that that's what Fort Walton Beach has now. Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. Yeah. But no, man, the cigar, nice. <laughs> yeah. It's burning real smooth for me, and I, I see. Yeah, Caesar did a great job blending this, man. It, it's not. It's burning evenly, and the flavors are, have married perfectly. I was sitting with him last night, and, and unfortunately he was supposed to be here today, but unfortunately he was in tr stuck in traffic. But Caesar is one of those guys that in this industry is hard to come by a legitimate good guy. And that's what he is. He travels back and forth to the Dominican Republic to his factory. And um, they opened a couple years ago and they just create quality small batch yeah. cigars. I mean, really good cigars. And it's, of course, starts with the tobacco. They pick some quality tobacco, a tobacco. They seem to come up with blends that. No one else is coming up with in, in this industry. And they do it with the love for it. You can tell the passion for yeah. it when you speak to them. And um, this is what their fifth anniversary cigar is. And it continues to make me happy every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's crucial. How did you start and build that relationship with them? Well, we were at a Christmas event in uh, Destin. And um, I met a mutual friend, uh, Chris. And Chris uh, put us together. And we had some great conversations because uh, Caesar is a, a whiskey enthusiast. That's the only man that seems to have just as much whiskey <laughs> in his selection as I have. But the love for some of the same things has brought us together. And we're going to do some very exciting things in the future. We have some um, new business ventures that we're going to be doing together also. That's awesome, man. What would you say is your favorite part of the process, right? So I think with like anything in in mindset, you know, being in the military, you know, it's A to point A to Z. What would you say is your favorite point in the process as far as uh, creating your own cigar? What is your... I think coming up with the blends. Got you. Um, I think the process when you first start coming up with the blends, playing with the tobacco. Yeah. Seeing how the flavors change just by tweaking it just a little. 
And then, of course, you go to the uh, process of uh, production, of course. Everybody loves that. But then in the beginning, choosing what tobaccos you're going to use to right. make a blend. And, of course, that's dependent on your palate and what you're trying to do yeah. and your creativity for that day. Gotcha. So, Ron, when you say choosing your tobacco, I'm sure it's not like McDonald's. You're like, I want a, <laughs> I want a number three, I want a number right. two. How long is that process taking? And for you specifically, what are you looking for? Are you gauging the crowd like, hey, I'm in Navarre, this area tends to go towards this, or are you going to, hey, I'm Ron, this is what I'm going towards? Yeah, so sort of like the number two. <laughs> um, I try to choose something that I love, right. and then we hope that other people love it. And like I said, you're not going to hit it out of the park every time. But if I don't hit it out of the park, I got cigars that I would love to smoke every day. Yeah. So I just put it in my collection if it doesn't work. But the process can take as little as long as possible because you're just trying to get the right blends uh, to fit your palate and what you're you're trying to shoot for on that. I'll give you an example. The Maduro, I was just looking for something that actually tasted like a grape. Hmm. And I'm not talking about just a, a throw a grape in your mouth. No. And, not, but, not at Publix. Some no. of that essence of what a grape tastes like. Hmm. And I think we hit, hit it on the mark. But that process can take a couple different times with rolling the tobacco and smoking it. So it can take one month or it can take three. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's huge because sometimes, you know, when you go to a cigar shop, you don't know the time it took or what the people are that made that cigar, what it took to get yeah, right. to put in that cigar. And like hearing that now, you know, like, oh, it's not just the process, right? Yeah, yeah. Off the assembly line. Now, this is people really going out there and picking their product for the people. Absolutely. Caesar did a cigar that he and I blended for a friend of uh, mine. It's a six by 60. It is a real, uh, real quick, Ron, for the masses. What's six by 60 mean? Six by 60 is the, <laughs> is the ring gauge of the cigar. Right. It's one of the classic sizes. Uh, most people look at Al Capone. Gotcha. Smoked a, big, a large cigar. Yeah. But in that cigar, he did a San Andreas wrapper on that also. And it is a phenomenal smoke. I didn't know it was going to turn out like that. Mm -hmm. But he blended that cigar and the construction on it is beautiful. We're selling that cigar over at the library cigar right nice. now. Okay. But that cigar from start to finish probably took six months. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah I mean, when I say cigars and art, that's literally what I mean because it really is. I mean, you could almost compare it to a fine bottle of wine. It, the process that goes into it is behind the scenes. You know, everybody just sees the wrapper and a cigar in front of them. But, yes, it's definitely a process. And I think this was important for the podcast to kind of give, like, a synopsis in how the process works and what it entails and the legwork that is involved, not only owning a cigar shop, but also creating your own brand and then, Cigar process A to Z. So, yeah, I'm glad. Uh, so, you guys watching with all your cigar questions, hopefully this episode will answer a lot of those novice questions because even I'm learning some stuff. Every day. That I didn't know. That's pretty dope. Every day. Oh, awesome. I'm really, really interested, Ron, in the business side too because I know that can take a lot of your time. So, your balance. Are you finding balance or how are you managing that as, as well? Well, Balance means different things yeah, to different that, people. Yeah, that's <laughs> so business is my hobby. The cigar business is my hobby. So I don't ever get tired of it. I know you play golf, so you love to play golf. You I love do. it. Yeah, absolutely. I just love the business of the business. And what I mean by that is I get up every day. I lay down every night thinking about the cigar business. Mm. How can I be better? How can we be better? Because it's a team effort. It's not just me. Uh, I have partners and I have uh, employees. So we try to do the best we can every day mm -hmm. and get up the next day and try to do it again. So the balance is the win. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the win. And I think that in this business, uh, a lot of people think they can always do it better. So you see a lot of people opening up shops and not knowing what they should or should not be doing. Instead of, uh, you know, asking people who've been in the business for a long time what mistakes not to, to make. Mm -hmm. But everybody thinks they can do it better, and, and that's okay, too. As long as they're trying and they're trying to put their creativity on it, that's all that matters. Gotcha. 
because you've been an OG in the game so long, is that something you might offer? Like, hey, I'm a new and up and coming guy with a cigar shop that I just opened in uh, Tallahassee. Can I come learn from you real quick, or can you give me some pointers and tips? Um, is like some mentorship opportunities for those people out there? Absolutely. I have, I have several mentees that we um, actually work with, but also we have the consulting side of the business also. So if you you don't want to waste time doing the the mentee thing, we can do the the um, consultation for you also. But if you want to be a um, a mentee you have to be willing to have an open mind mm. and uh, submit to the things that and knowledge in, within the business. And also you got to be able to want to do better in this business, uh, study, uh, learn. If you're not learning, no matter how much I tell you, it's not going to work. Yeah. You know, you have to go out there and get some information for yourself and you have to go out there and learn on your own also. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's cool. So, uh, you mentioned golf. Do you do you play any? I did at one time <laughs> in my life, but one round of golf stopped me from playing. Oh, gotcha. But, but I'm going to get back into it. Golf is one of those things that uh, goes right along with cigar smoking. Right, right. So I'm going to uh, get back into it. It's a time thing right now. There's a lot more stuff that we want to accomplish within this business, and um, I'll probably get – more in depth with that later on. <laughs> yeah, I feel like golf and cigars really goes hand in hand. Uh, most of the time, like outside of your professional tournaments, I feel like every time, matter of fact, I was golfing yesterday and my buddies were smoking cigars. I forgot mine at the house, but it goes hand in hand. If you had a, if you're playing golf, like you have a cigar with you. That's kind of just almost like a standard. And uh, I feel like for me, I don't know. I, I like a, a you know a medium you know body cigar when I'm golfing. Just a, a full body cigar knock me out. I'd be laid out on a golf course somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like cigars and uh, golf are actually. It, we talked about this earlier. Cigars started elevating once COVID hit. Well, golf also shot up when COVID was happening because it was one of the only things that you could actually go out and do. Yeah. So I feel like golf and cigars are actually shooting up laterally or parallel to each other. And yeah, so this is a passion of mine and I thank you for taking time out you know kind of you know kicking it with us and putting us on the game and because yeah this gives us a new like a different aspect avenue for what cigars are all about so yeah this is definitely learning some new things today even you probably had a rebuttal for that Ron but I know you created a, a cigar specifically for a golf tournament recently is yeah, so the Limitada and actually Great Caesar, smoke, bro. Yeah, we Caesar, that, yeah, we Caesar that produced time. that for us also okay. but uh it has a Zimbabwe wrapper on it, and it is a phenomenal cigar. And I think that he came out with the perfect Vitola, which is the um, Lonesdale, or people call it a Corona also. But um, it is an exceptional cigar. It smokes well. Binder to filler ratio is great. Excuse me, binder to wrapper ratio is great. <laughs> and um, it is a superb cigar. He did a great job. Knocked it out of the park. Right. And that's kind of what we talked about when we were smoking it uh, last time. And I actually brought it up on the podcast. And I was like, this would actually be a great cigar on the golf course uh, just because it was super mellow, still had flavor, but it wasn't going to put me on my butt. You know what I mean? Shout out to him on that because I feel like that was well done. But you said Zimbabwe. Rapper. Yeah. I've never had. Well, well most people don't play with that rapper because it's hard to marry with the tobaccos or, or blend with the, with, with the tobaccos. And but when you are able to be creative enough to put that together like Caesar is, it yeah, works it was, well. Yeah, it was solid. Yeah. I, I know. I know you liked it too. I love it. I love it. I mean, I think I've steered a couple of people over here specifically for that limitada. Like, yo, that limitada is where it's at for me. Just I'm still a novice smoker for myself, so I just want to make sure that if people that are new to the game and I tell them to come to Navarre Cigars, I kind of get them that and a, yeah. a couple of others. But, yeah, that's a great, great, great smoke. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Ryan, so, like, if you had, like, a, a beginner smoker that came into here, what would be your advice to them? Which way would you steer them or what advice would you give them? Cigar-wise? Cigar-wise, uh, I'll go back to my Navarre exclusive. <laughs> yeah. Our Connecticut is one of the best Connecticut's in the business because it's not like your uh, granddad's Connecticut with no flavor. It has the perfect, perfect balance of strength and flavor. The perfect Vitola, which is a Toro, 
you're not going to catch yourself wanting for more. It's going to fill you up from the start to finish. Right. But I would steer them towards that. A lot of people come in here and um, they think name recognition, the Monte Cristos or right. the, the Romeo oh, and Juliet. Yeah. I would put our Connecticut up there with anybody. Yeah. What about the guy that, you know, gets off work, just head coach of a football team, probably just took over a new job, has a lot of stress on his life. <laughs> what would you give that guy as a smoke? So I would probably give him the double Maduro. It's a short Cuban Robusto. And a friend of mine that smokes that cigar, he says, man, I w- wish it was longer. <laughs> but that's <laughs> yeah. the cigar that keeps him wanting for more. And, that, and that's the cigar that I would give a guy that just got off work and had a hard day and just wanted a complete cigar. That cigar is very complete. Gotcha. Gotcha. Navarre has that, uh, what's that thing coming up? Uh, the, the festival. You got a, you got a festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have the uh, Smoking in the Panhandle Cigar Festival. Right. It's our first one. I hope it is a great success. We have a lot of things going on with it, about nine or ten events. It's going to be between Navarre and Fort Walton. and the events will be set at some really good uh, venues. I think uh, that we picked some great venues to have them. We got some good people coming down. We have some cigar reviewers, some cigar manufacturers coming in. We got some great vendors. So I think it's going to be a great success and bring a little more to the culture, cigar culture in the panhandle. Man, I'm excited to see it. Um, I've been seeing the flyers around, the Instagram traffic. So I'm definitely excited to meet and greet and, and show my show my face because I definitely want to support that, man. So, Ron, you playing in the tournament? Actually, I won't be able to play in the tournament. Only reason is because I'll be working. Mm. That's the only bad thing about it. When you put on these things, you don't get an opportunity to take advantage, full advantage of the events that you're putting on. But also, you know, that week we'll be having uh, our uh, anniversary party that week also, wow. along with the golf tournament. And, oh, yeah, by the way, I want to take this time to give a shout out to one of our charities that we sponsor with the uh, golf tournament, which is C3 Sports. Okay. Um, so C3 doing big things, man. Yeah, yeah, with their C3 elite team. They actually brought some kids over tonight. Uh, <laughs> right, we had them. Yeah, yeah. So they're doing some big things, and it's our pleasure to be able to sponsor the C3 uh, sports. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Keeping it in a community. Got to. Yeah, big part of the community. Shout out to Dwayne doing big things and, and Hemi. Taking those kids, man, it's good to see those kids. You know, yeah. a lot of times we hear, you know, the kids in the streets and stuff like that. So for you to have an opportunity to sponsor C3 and to have those kids off the streets and doing something positive uh, is a great thing. Definitely. Man, so to wrap it up, Ron, like, what's your mission? What's your goal? What's your plan for the next, I would say, 365? But, you know, what's next for Navarre Cigars and what's next for Ron? Well, for Navarre Cigars and the Library Cigar, I'd we're going to um, do some interesting things inside and outside uh, of the building. We're going to add uh, cigar rollers, uh, uh, rolling cigars daily in-house. Nice. Whoa. We're going to come up with some more blends, hopefully 8 to 10 new blends, nice. expand our portfolio. We're also going to uh, do some signature outside events that we have planned, doing some things with the PGA. Uh, nice. And, yeah. uh, and also... so we have some good things coming up and uh my vision is that we'll take the var cigar brand and the library cigar brand and make it a regional brand right that people talk about and enjoy our product awesome absolutely and for those that's listening they can buy online right yes they can go to our website and uh buy the navar cigar brand online navarcigarbar.com and just go in there. You can order one cigar. You can order 25 or 100, however many you want, as long as they last because they <laughs> yeah, go yeah. quickly. Yeah. So definitely go in there and purchase the cigars. And we do have the Blue Smoke Cigar at the uh, Library Cigar also. It's not up online yet, but we're working on that also. Awesome. We'll, de- we'll definitely be sure to link that in the description. And, oh, yeah, uh, sure. Make sure y'all, uh, y'all tap in as well. Diddy, what you got, man? Man, that's it. It was another successful episode. Navarre Cigars, you know, again, Ron, definitely appreciate the hospitality. Absolutely. Not only giving us a place to shoot, but cigar and whiskey to go with it. And, and so and on top of that, the mentorship that you've given Maine, especially, and kind of schooling us on the game. I feel like uh, as a uh, life in general, when you keep stuff to yourself, it doesn't do any good. So the ability for you to 
pass it on to like you said, like you know the young guys and and uh, make sure that the you know cigar world is in good hands. So yeah, we appreciate the uh, man the free game that you give to us, man. So we, we shout out to you on that, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely, got to get Ron his flowers. Got to get everybody his flowers, man. Dave, thank you for uh, taking care of the camera out there. Tony Carter, he he walked in the building, man, but that's another OG. Uh, like I said, the good community, the good fellowship that I've had while I walked in this building has been nothing more than exceptional. So I appreciate Ron for having this space for me to meet good guys that keep me on the right path, man. So, Ron, your flowers, man, you yeah. got them all. Roses, daisies, whatever <laughs> flowers you want, man. That's that's you, man. We appreciate you. you. And shout out Caesar on this on this. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Caesar. I know the traffic's got you stuck in Panama City. Next time you're in town, yeah. definitely stop Reach by. Out, yeah, yeah. We're pulling up regardless. So yeah. thank you, that. Ron, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you, man. Another episode of No Books, my boy. Yes, sir. All right. We out. out. See ya. <laughs>